Let's jump to the wall here, and today we're going to be going over a blog post from from Total War, from Creative Assembly, that is of a very different tone than what we're used to. And in many ways, this is a really good step forward. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm going to be very critical of because Creative Assembly love to peddle a lot of crap these days, and I see through a lot of it. So there's a lot of good stuff. I'm going to give them credit where credit's due, but there's also stuff here that I think I need to be critical of. Now, I already went through this during a live stream, and if you want to check out that live stream, you can see my initial reaction to this. And during that live stream, I discussed with you guys uh, a lot of these topics, and I've had some time to think about some of the other issues in here uh, to come up with a bit more of a, of a refined reaction to it. And that's what we'll have in this video here. So it's up to you which way you want to absorb this, whether it be in the live stream or in, in this particular video. So before I get into any of this stuff here, I think it, this is a good opportunity to actually explain to you guys sort of once and for all about my experiences with Creative Assembly and where a lot of my criticisms have gone because I know that I've been thinking about this a lot. I, I haven't been communicating it very well at all because in the past I've come onto live streams and just been like really irritated and people would ask me questions about Creative Assembly and then I would say things like Creative Assembly sucks or I don't like Creative Assembly, that kind of stuff. And that has been, I think, very unhelpful because it's given people the, maybe the wrong idea of where that anger has actually been going. So in this video here, I'm going to clear that up a little bit. So... Creative Assembly is not a single person or entity. It, the experiences that we all have with Creative Assembly are going to vary based on the, the type of interactions that we have. So many of you guys might be on the Reddit, many of you guys might be on the Discord, and you're going to have different interactions. So one part of Creative Assembly is the Total War Leadership Team. These are the, the people that I don't think any of us are really getting much uh, like personal conversation with them. These are people that are making the decisions that, uh, that uh, shape the price, uh, how often the patches come out, I guess even how big these games are going to be, I'm not entirely sure. But these are the decision makers at Creative Assembly. Uh, and they definitely have let the entire company down and the community. And it's going to take a long time to, to fix all this stuff. Um, but I don't have any personal interactions with them. And so I don't know personally if Roger Cullum or Rob Bartholomew, they could be really nice guys. I just don't know. Then you've got community management. These are the guys that interact with you guys on, on the Discord, on Reddit, on various forums. These, these people usually don't last at Creative Assembly very long. It's an in and out sort of position. You know, you had CA Grace, um, CA Simone, um, CA Yui. These are all ex-CA staff members. CA Yui recently left. Um, good luck to him in the future, by the way, with whatever he's doing. Uh, they're, they're really the face of the company in many ways, and their job is to just sort of interact with you guys and keep your, your spirits high and also to put out fires. These guys here, the Total War leadership team, oftentimes start the fires that the, the CMs, the community managers, have to try to put out. So I don't envy their job. They've got a difficult job, and they have no decision-making power. So they're not responsible for it, and they have to deal with a lot of the anger that happens, and that's just really unfortunate. Uh, then you've got the actual devs, the people who are on the ground floor making the actual stuff, you know, doing the sound design, the art design, uh, programming, all that kind of stuff. They're not making decisions about what's coming out to you. They're just doing the work that other people are telling them to do. They all, in my opinion, do an excellent job because I've heard, we've all heard at this point, that the tools of Creative Assembly are outdated as fuck. And it's a miracle that these games can even work at all due to the basically the the uh, the ingenuity of the people working at Creative Assembly is astounding. So none of my anger has ever gone towards the dev team. You know, I've often spoken quite highly of Richard Aldridge, who I've never had any personal interaction with Rich Aldridge, but the stuff that he was doing in Warhammer 2, and even the stuff that he does in Warhammer 3, it's good. The content is good. The price is a problem. The price is these guys' responsibility, not Rich Aldridge. So again, the dev team really have no problems with them. They, they do the best that they can with the tools that they have available to them. Uh, then you've got marketing. Now, this has been where my primary interaction has been. Now, there's regular marketing where they like do uh, ads and stuff like that. But then you've got influencer management. Now, this is something that I very rarely spoke about. But influencer management, anytime that I've come onto a live stream where I've been in a bad mood, it's largely because I've had a bad interaction with influencer management. Now, in uh, 2019 influencer management we, we started getting in contact with and they built up a report and eventually I rejoined the uh, they asked me well they suggested that I should um, uh, I should reapply and that would be given a fair chance and in 
in 2022 and 2021, that happened. It was a pretty good relationship. You know, there was back and forth. I would give some feedback. They would give some feedback. And it was a productive relationship. But then in 2022, right after Warhammer 3 release, everything just completely changed. Obviously, my tone changed, but so did theirs. And it became a really bad relationship. And what ended up starting to happen was emotional blackmail. Now, this is where... If somebody, this is where basically you take the emotions of someone and you try to manipulate it in order to get them to behave a certain way. So I was obviously very angry after Warhammer 3. Everybody was bloody angry after Warhammer 3, but I was very vocal about it publicly. And what the influencer management team did basically was tried to use my emotions uh, the way that I felt in order to make me feel like I was the bad guy. And that started to make me resent them immensely and it happened multiple times where it basically came down to this I'm not going to say it verbatim but basically it was like you're angry at us therefore we don't know if we can work with you so you need to stop being angry with us even though the the reason that I was angry with them wasn't being fixed so what they were doing is they were taking the fact that they did something wrong turning it and making it somehow my fault you know it's, it's my fault that I got angry that they broke their promises that they went absent for several months even though they said they were going to be present when when they gave us misinformation or they didn't correct their information when it was when it was wrong and and made us look like fools out in the community when it was you know, when we look like fools out of the community because of, of the marketing programs, we turn our anger back to them. And then they <laughs> they took no responsibility for it. So influencer management, massive letdown. Now, this is a side of things that you guys have no interaction with. So you probably don't give a, a absolute crap about influencer management. But it gives you a bit of an idea of why I've been the way that I have. It's because I have a bad interaction with influencer management, which you guys have no idea about it. it's even existence. And then I basically take that out on a stream. It's basically what happened. So anyway, let's let's go through this now. And um, there's some there's some a uh, little bit of emotional blackmail in here to, to give you a bit of an idea. And I'll I'll, I'll help you identify it when it gets through because it's it's really bad when someone tries to do this stuff. Anyway, so dear Total War fans, I'm Roger Cullen, Vice President, Creative Assembly, and writing on behalf of our Total War leadership team. It has been a difficult few months, and we recognize that we made mistakes when it comes to our relationship with you all. This is a perfectly good statement. Also, I've never had any interaction with Roger Cullum. I, I don't think I've ever heard of him before right today. I imagine that this is a position that's higher than Chief Product Officer, um, Rob Bartholomew. And this is definitely a better worded uh, statement than what Rob did uh, with the Shadows of Change stuff, which I thought that Rob, uh, there was a rumor that Rob had been fired, but apparently he's still at the company because at the bottom it says he's still there. But uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter if he's there or not. Anyway. So this is a good statement here. You've recognized that you've made mistakes. You're not being specific about it. What mistakes? What mistakes have you made, by the way, Creative Assembly? You want to, you want to point them out? It's fine. You don't have to, but uh, you have to know what you've done wrong in order to rectify that. Trust me, I'm a bit of an expert on this. I know I've made mistakes, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to go into the details of them right now, but I have pointed out to my mistakes in public and said, yeah, remember when I did that? That was a bloody mistake, and I don't do it again. Yeah, um, it's important to recognize it. We can be embarrassed about it, but there's no point hiding the fact that we've we've, we've made a mistake. You got to sort of embrace it uh, if you want to truly be better. That's you know, again, coming from someone who has managed to make a lot of mistakes and overcome them. That's that's worked for me at least. Um, it's been a constant conversation internally on how we can get back to solid ground. What's clear is that it won't be easy, and that it will take some time and effort. And I fully support this as well. Despite all of my anger that I've had towards Creative Assembly in general, mostly towards the influencer management, which, by the way, influencer management basically means they manage YouTubers and uh, Twitch streamers. That's their entire job. And so when you've got an entire batch of YouTubers that are basically in total revolt of the influencer program, that influencer program isn't working very well. It's basically emotional Gestapo. It's really freaking bad. There are probably a lot of, of creators that are quite happy with it, largely due to their lack of interaction i think on a personal level with the influencer management but my interactions with them have been very bad anyway anyway so uh this here definitely in support of it, it will take time and effort um and I i'm still going to be here in the total war scene and i hope many of you guys will be to to give them the extra chances they need but they do have to prove themselves now and i, I think it's good that they've recognized that and the rest of this blog post sort of goes into detail about how they're going to do about that. Now, this statement here, this is where the emotional blackmail uh, comes in. We see the confusion, the frustration, and the distrust of us across the community. And honestly, it breaks our hearts. So what they've done here is they've taken your emotions and they've basically expressed how, how hurt it's made them. Okay. 
the fact that you're confused, despite the fact that they're not being transparent, oh, it's hurt them. Your frustration, it's hurt them. Your distrust of us, it's hurt them. So this is what I'm talking about, where they take something that you've done, which you have every right to feel these ways, and made it make, make try to make you feel like illegitimate that you shouldn't be feeling these things. Now, here's the thing, especially with the distrust, let me give you some specific examples, Creative Assembly or Roger Cullum, about why you are distrusted so much. Let's go back just a few years. Let's go back to the uh, the future of Three Kingdoms. So that video there, there was a key statement I think that really stands out, where I think it was um, Jack Lusted. Again, not blaming Kim, he was probably just told to say this, basically put in the firing line. Um, we have completed our scheduled... Uh, content for Total War Three Kingdoms, which was such a load of garbage because everybody knew because of prior interactions with blog posts or whatever, that there was more stuff planned and that it was simply cancelled due to whatever reasons. And so people saw right through it because they don't have the memory of a goldfish to actually remember this stuff and they didn't let you get away with it. Then you've got the Shadows of Change stuff where you've got Rob Bartholomew's infamous statements, costs are up and therefore prices need to rise, which was a kind of a, which is a true statement, but also bullshit because th this is half lies, right? Where the inflation didn't really account for the 150% increase in price uh, to relative to content. So it was just filled with, with bullcrap. Like this is the, the business reality of supporting Warhammer 3, even though you don't support Warhammer 3, you make products for Warhammer 3, and then you sell them so that you can make money because you don't have anything else making you money. So this is the kind of stuff that causes this distrust. If it, break your, if it breaks your heart, you have only yourself to blame for this because you're the one that were, were being dishonest. You're being dishonest by lying by omission or by, by using uh, what I guess you think is clever language to distort the actual truth. So yeah, shut the hell up with that crap. Don't don't use emotional blackmail. Don't try to make the community feel bad for the way that they feel because it's their money. They put their money on the line and they get garbage as a result. And then when they try to express their their displeasure in what you've done, you ban them on the floor and say, you can't bloody talk here unless you're respectful. Shut the fuck up up with that attitude. And I hope that that's never going to happen again. But yeah, bull, take this emotional blackmail and shove it right up your fucking ass, okay? Don't do this shit. Anyway, I'm talking about emotional blackmail. It's not good to see this kind of crap. And creative something do this shit all the bloody time. Oh, you should feel bad for us, small family business. You, Your anger is hurting us, even though we're trying to scam you with the money crap. So shut the hell up. Uh, we make games to bring you joy and inspire a love of history of fantasy and strategy games. I'm obviously being very harsh right here, by the way. Um, this here is a lie. So this is what I'm talking about before by cause and distrust. This here is a blatant lie. You are not a fan of Total War. You're a massive, you're the head of, second in charge of a massive corporation, $100 million uh, worth, I think that um, Creative Assembly is. I'm not sure if it's still worth that much now. Um, you don't make games to bring us joy. You couldn't care less if the games bring us joy. And you've proven that in the past. We can use ex very recent examples of that. You make games to make profit. That's that's why Total War has become a factory of Total War games, why each game is like very similar to the one that came previously. In fact, the similarities between the next Total War games that come out, they get it becomes almost identical, these games. Um there's nothing wrong with making games for profit. Most of the games companies out there are doing that. But you don't make games to bring us joy because if that was the case, you would have done something about Warhammer 3. When Warhammer 3 came out, people were very unhappy with it and you went silent for months and you never addressed it, you never apologized for it, you never fucking changed anything. The Realms of Chaos campaign, still complete and utter rubbish. So don't make out like we make games to bring you joy because if there is a game that doesn't sell, you just abandon it. Thrones of Britannia, Total War Three Kingdoms, Realms of Chaos campaign for Warhammer 3, you don't give a shit about that. You just move on to the next thing. You treat people and products like disposable trash. So this is bullshit and I'm calling you out on it. Uh, to inspire a love of history of fantasy and strategy games. Uh, you've got a cash cow. That's what you've got, right? If Total War didn't make money, you just wouldn't make it. This is why you're trying to make games like friggin' Hyenas, to, to tap into other uh, other things. It just isn't working, that's all. Total War is our everything. Yeah, because nothing else is anything to Creative Assembly. Nothing else works. It's the only thing that you've got going. 
Uh, we care about it as deeply as you. In, I think it's in a very different way that they care about it because if Total War is a bad game, but it sells, I don't think they care. If Total War doesn't sell, uh, then the company goes under, which is kind of what's in danger at the moment. This is, this is a statement that would only ever be made after a failure like Total War Pharaoh. Recently, it's clear that we have failed to demonstrate that in our actions. You definitely have, because I don't believe a word of this. This is, this is corporate PR bullshit. I don't believe this for a fucking second. This, this is where this statement here really needs to come into play to make me believe this. If six months from now, you really turn things around and I'm like, okay, okay, cool. All right, maybe you do bring game, uh, make games to bring us joy and maybe Total War is your everything. If you can do that over the next six months, then that, you know, I'll change my turn on it. But the previous six months, this is horseshit, absolute horseshit. Uh, and we are sorry. So... I definitely like want to accept this apology, but words with Creative Assembly are so meaningless. They're basically, if you guys have, have watched the TV show um, Parks and Recreation, when I hear Creative Assembly, I think of them as Jeremy Jam. Their word means garbage to them. They will just say anything that they want to get out of trouble, basically. They'll make any promise, make any apology. It just, their word is piss in the wind. It means nothing because they're so dishonest. So I can appreciate that you're trying to be sorry here, but it means nothing until action. Do it with your actions. And a lot of the stuff here going forward, if it, it does actually play out, that is the apology. And I, I will accept it if the, it does actually um, come into play. But just saying we are sorry on its own, not good enough. Um, we cannot fix our issue overnight, but we will look towards a more transparent and consistent relationship with you. And that's definitely something that I want to see as well. And this is something that over time we're going to have to work towards. It's, it's going to take time and effort and it won't be easy. And I understand that. And I'm I'm going to try to, I'll give them the opportunity every chance I get. I guess it's not all about me. Uh, in fact, most of it is, none of it's about me, really. It's all about you guys here. Um, I don't think Creative Assembly is trying to make amends with me whatsoever. Just trying to make amends with the Total War community. I guess I'm just talking about it from my perspective, which is all I can really do. Um, but yeah, I don't want to see more transparency. I want to see more honesty because on, like the Shadows of Change blog, that was probably their idea of being transparent. I don't want to see that. That's Whenever I see the these not really the truth statements, that's not what I want to see. Just I want to see more of this stuff here where you just get down to the nitty gritty and just be honest about what's going to happen and how you feel about it. None of this crap. This is bull crap. Uh, Total War is a big complex ship to steer built on decades of knowledge, passion and technology. The slow and steady pace we've taken up until now has benefited us in the past, but today we see the need to react faster to help address the challenges that are ahead of us. Yep, and this is going to take time for you to figure that stuff out and uh, take all the time that you need to do that. Uh, I, know, I understand that there needs to be a, a fair bit of rework within the company, a fair bit of restructuring. Take the time that you need to make sure that the stuff that comes through is good quality at a reasonable price. I think that's that's all anyone can ever ask of you. And then, of course, with your communication with, with the community, just stop trying to trick them. You know, we're not five-year-olds that you can just easily lie to. Most of us are bloody 35-year-old man trials. We can see through your bullshit very bloody easily. So let's talk about these changes, uh, challenges and what you can expect from both Total Warhammer 3 and Total War Pharaoh going forward. So Total War Warhammer 3, uh, we have listened to your feedback on Shadows of Change and we know that we have failed to meet your expectations of what a DLC should be. To address that, we are enhancing our offer to anyone who purchased Shadows of Change with more content and a commitment to ensuring that we better meet your expectations going forward. So this is that 4.2 update that I mentioned before. This was obviously leaked to me. I already knew about this. Um, this is, I guess this is the actual confirmation of it. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, look at me, I was right. Because honestly, it could have very easily been wrong. It's, you know, leaked stuff is bullshit a lot of the time. So that this one here happened to just be correct. So that's great. Honestly, doing this, I think, is the right thing. Because you could have handled this two ways. You could have just lowered the price of Shadows of Change. Or you could have added more content to it. And you've gone with this. And honestly, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, so th that'll be good. I'm looking forward to seeing what additions will be made to Shadows of Change. I am assuming that there will be Hag Lords and Lore of Hag for a Stankia. Uh, I'm assuming. <laughs> so that would be great. Everything outside of that, I don't mind. Some more Legendary Heroes would be good. More Legendary Lords would be awesome as well. Although my expectations of that are not that high. But anyway, we'll see. Uh, we're targeting a major update to Shadows of Change, which will arrive free for everyone who owns it. We have the goal of releasing this update in February of 2024, at which point it will become part of the package for everyone who buys it in the future. 
Cool. I was kind of expecting it to come this year, but honestly, take all the time that you need. Just do a good job of it. And I tell you what, I've, I've currently got, and I'm sure many of you guys do, I've got a negative review of, in fact, let me, let me just pop it up real quick. I've got a negative review of that particular DLC on Steam. All right, so here's my review. It's a real simple review. Content good, price bad. The last product I'll receive for free from Creative Assembly. So here's my, I think it's if Creative Assembly is making the effort, I'll make some promises as well. Creative Assembly, if you release a amount of content that is makes the, the DLC worth $25, I will remove, I will delete this review. If you make this this DLC actually on par with the previous DLCs from Warhammer 2, I'll turn this into a positive review because I know apparently they really value the reviews, uh, review scores for their DLC. If we have a look at, uh, it's mostly negative, 21%. So that's pretty bad. So that's that's my commitment to you for if you if you for you doing this. I want to reward you for doing the right thing. It can't always be about punishing you and getting angry at you. It's also important that I do my part to um, you know, to incentivize you to doing the right thing. I think so. That launch date is our ambition, but this isn't concrete. Uh, it may move, and as soon as those plans are finalized, we'll let let you know, and we'll keep you in the know as soon as we get closer to its release. That's cool. This is what I want to hear. This is the kind of transparency that I think people can get behind. If you make a mistake, just be like, hey, we made a mistake. It's it's going to be an extra week or whatever. No one's going to care about that. But when you're just like, oh, we never said it was going to be this and just pretend like it never happened, which happens all the bloody time with you guys, then people get annoyed because it, it's okay to make mistakes. I think that's a big thing that Creative Assembly doesn't realize. They try so hard to cover up their mistakes. You make so many of them. Stop trying to cover them up. Just accept that you make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And we'll just, we'll just forgive you because everyone makes mistakes. It's fine. Uh, when we return in the new year, you'll hear directly from game director Richard Aldridge and the Warhammer 3 team who will start to talk to you about what this expansion to Shadows of Change will look like. Cool. Look, I always like hearing from Richard Aldridge, so that'll be good. I'm looking forward to that. Making this right is important to us, and to this properly, Thrones of Delay, sorry, Thrones of Decay, will move out of its intended release of wind, uh, sorry, release window of winter 2023. We're looking to launch this DLC in April of 2024. So that's a pretty hefty delay. It's so fitting as well, these names. You got Shadows of Short Change, and then you got Thrones of De Delay. I can't wait to see what the next one is. Pricks of Dicks of Slanesh, who knows? Anyway, so uh, look, take as long as you need. Just make it good. Make it worth the $25 or whatever it is you're going to charge for it. Make it worth it. And I'll buy it because I'm not going to get it for free. I understand that. That's the price you pay when you when you, when you talk to them about when you when you use this language at them. You, you're not going to get early access anymore because <laughs> this was the kind of language that I've been using here is the kind of shit that they would tell me off for. You can be critical of, of Creative Assembly and, and be fine. Like if you say, I don't think that it's worth $25, you're not getting in trouble for that. But if you're like making fun of them and using mocking tone and saying that they're emotionally blackmailing you and they're just being deceitful, that crosses a line with them. And that's what's going to get you removed from the program. Which, by the way, I want to make it clear. I was not specifically removed from the program. On multiple occasions, I was asked to perhaps think about leaving it. And on the second or third time that they said, hey, you should, you should leave the program because this is too hard for us. Um, I was just like, fine, remove me for the program. In, in not calm ways. <laughs> so anyway, I, I get pretty emotional. But anyway, I'm, I'm not right for the program. So I never should have been in there in the first place. I understand that. So, okay, here we are. Uh, we have more work to do on Thrones of Decay to make sure that we don't repeat our past mistakes and to give you the amount of content that you rightfully expect from us at these price points. Once we've launched our free update to Shadows of Change, we'll talk more about this next DLC we'll offer and how it will add to your experiences of Warhammer 3. We'll make sure that you know exactly what's coming in Thrones of Decay before pre-orders are available and make sure that you have full transparencies around the content before you see buy now buttons. So this is very interesting, this statement here, because this is what I'm very much interested in. For more than a year, I think, within no, two years, really, with the, while I was in the credit program, one big thing after Warhammer 3's launch is that I really pushed hard to get the review embargo um, tweaked, to be pushed back so it wasn't like the day before, because 
so much of the criticism can be argued as a review, depending on how big the, the criticism is. Obviously, if you say things like, oh, I think that that particular unit should be belonging to that faction, and I don't think that that's good what they've done, that's such a minor criticism, and that's, that's not going to get in shit water. But if you say something like, hey, the Realms of Chaos campaign is complete and utter rubbish, and you should do everything you can to avoid playing it, maybe even not purchase this game, yeah, that crosses a line, they'll say that's review, and you'll get kicked out of the program. So there's there's a spectrum. So you got to be very careful. And that's what the review problem was, because that was a huge problem for me with, with uh, Worm 3, and I'm still going to bring that up constantly. Now... Um, if they me mess with that, oh, sorry, if they make that a little bit more um, forgiving for creators to not spend like three weeks of marketing and then one day of criticism, that would be good so that you guys can have a bit more transparency. But that being said, it is so important that you guys not trust anything that creators say prior to that review embargo because all they do at that point there is show it to you. You can't take their opinions because they're just marketing at that point. And I include myself in that regard. Not that I'm going to get early access. I'm definitely not. So just, just keep that in mind. There's also no need to pre-order anything until the day before, the day of, or the day after. There's just no need. So this this whole pre-order available thing, if the pre-order is available three weeks before it comes out, look, there's a lesson to be learned in Total War Pharaoh down here. Just don't do it. The Creative Assembly have not earned your pre-orders. Even if they're making this effort, they haven't earned it, and we'll go into that in a bit. Okay, after Thrones of Decay, Decay sorry, after Thrones of Decay releases, we'll reveal what the next series of content for Women 3 looks like. Our work on this beloved series isn't finished yet. That is great to hear. Uh, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do in 2024. I thought we were going to have a good 2023. It started off good, ended really badly. But let's have a good 2024 on a fresh slate i guess i'm i'm gonna be sassy i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a sarcastic pain in the ass i'm gonna be a smart ass they can't stop me um but i also don't expect them to like me so it's fine um i just hope that you guys do anyway since 4.0 went live we've changed up how we approach making the updates to the game releasing 10 hot fixes as well as patch 4.1 all targeting issues that we've seen emerging after each subsequent update, as well as introducing new features like skill point reset to help balance. It. Okay, this is this is basically them pointing out, look, this is what we are doing, and you know what? Good stuff. This is not bad. Ten hot fixes. You know, a lot of the hot fixes kind of fix some things, broke others, but for the most part, pretty good effort. You know, we don't want to see a repeat of what happened with Nakai the Wanderer, where a core part of his campaign breaks, and then ah, oh, we'll get back to it in the next DLC when you're paying twenty five bucks for it. That's not cool, and it's good that we're not seeing that anymore because you had um, Greasus get his ridiculous speed get fixed pretty damn quick, um, as, as an example. I'm, although I think that a lot of people would have been fine with that staying in a little bit longer. Um, so it, it's good to see this. I definitely want to encourage that a bit more, and I think most people in the community want to see more of this. The only people who don't want to see this are the people who constantly have to update their mods. I get that. What are you going to do? The game, is, the game is still a work in progress. It's just... Unfortunately, your mods are not a priority over the overall health of the game, and this game is in need of a lot of surgeries. So, an increase to sorry, it's an increase in the number of game updates that we'd usually release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is just the same thing, roughly. So, once every two weeks. Honestly, really support this, and if you keep doing that, even if you miss a week or two, it's fine. Just be transparent about, it, be honest about it. You know, things fall behind schedule. It's all good. Uh, just don't don't make up bull crap. Uh, Total War Pharaoh. So we want to make you aware of a decision that we've made internally surrounding the game and what to expect with the DLC that we've been working on. There's some important information here that affects all owners of the game, so please read through this part carefully. And this end is really interesting. I'm not I don't care about Total War Pharaoh, but what they're doing here is fascinating. I've never seen this happen before, for Total War at least. In the next few days, all current owners of Total War Pharaoh will see that Steam has processed a partial refund to you and that some of your funds have been added to your Steam wallet. This is happening because we have lowered the price of the game to the new RRP of $40 USD, 40 euros or 30 pounds. So it is going to, hang on, let me have a look at this. What's the price of, oh, I, my Steam is in bloody AUD, Monopoly money. So that's not translate here. Never mind. Uh, I was just going to see what the price of uh, hang on, I might as well just have a quick check and get a rough idea of uh, Troy, 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 Troy. What is the price of Troy? No. Okay, the Troy, price of Troy is $74. Uh, 
is that forty dollars? Yeah, yeah, rough. Maybe a little bit more expensive. So it's going to be about the same price as Troy, roughly. Because uh, yeah, you take American dollars and then you add fifty percent. Yeah, no, I think it might actually be cheaper than Troy. So that's interesting. Um, on Steam, at least, because I, I got Troy for free on... Well, most of us got Troy for free on Epic. Not all of us. Anyway, so this is very interesting to see this new price point here. And that really does drive home that this is a Saga game. It always has been and always will be. It's a Saga game. And they they really did try to pull the wool over your eyes and trick you into buying a full-priced Saga game. And it didn't work. Thank fuck that it didn't, because if it did work, they'd do it again. The only reason they're doing this is because Total War Pharaoh sold about 50,000 copies. Now, to put things in perspective, it is the lowest sold Total War game of all time by a massive margin. Even Thrones of Britannia has sold a few hundred thousand copies. Most Total War games sold at least a million. If we go back to the old Total War games, like Rome 1 sold a million copies pretty damn early. That was when Creative Assembly was a much smaller company. So... Total War Pharaoh, it, it, what they tried to do with it was so obviously uh, like despicable with it. Uh, and I'm glad it backfired. I'm really, really glad with it. They're not really taking responsibility for the price hike with it. And now they've, they've priced it a little bit more reasonably. Personally, I st I'm still not willing to buy it at $40 because I'm just not interested in the game because of the battles, by the way. I actually am interested in Ancient Egypt, but with the battle system from Troy in there, no, nah, I just don't like the battles, so I'm not going to play it. Uh, we don't think it's fair that our fans who put their trust in Pharaoh should in any way feel disadvantaged by buying the game at the previous price. We've also removed the higher-priced edition of the game, the Deluxe and Dynasty Edition. There's now only one edition of the game available for purchase. So this is very interesting as well, because... Like if you are a, if you purchase a deluxe or a dynasty edition, I if if I was that, I, I would feel like quite a sucker right now because you've purchased something on a promise and they've basically said, Hey, we're breaking that promise right now. Um, because the, the content is not going to come in the same form as what they've promised, which is fair enough given this whole rework side of things. And they're just gonna refund that. Now that is money that imagine if you pre ordered this dynasty edition, say four months ago, and that's money that, it's not a lot of money, but imagine all of the people who purchased Dynasty Edition, it's been sitting in like a, an account of in theirs making interest. Imagine imagine if everybody just gave Creative Assembly $50. Let's say a million people did it. And then the, the Creative Assembly, they just give that $50 back to you six months later. Well, they make interest off that. So you didn't make interest off it. They did. Now, here's the thing. All 10 people that uh, purchased in its edition, it probably wasn't going to make them much interest. But it's just an interesting thing here. Um, this is why you shouldn't pre-order shit. You know, they break their promises constantly or they don't fulfill their promises. I'm not going to call them dishonest on this one here. They, they probably intended to do it up until this point here and they've had to rework it. Our, our next update that was originally our first paid DLC will... Uh, release early 2024 as a free update for everyone who owns the game. So that's interesting. So the first DLC is actually going to be free. Blood. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, we'll have plenty to show you about this now free edition in Pharaoh in the new year. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we have now begun the process of reassessing what comes next to Pharaoh. The future of Pharaoh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and while we don't have all the answers today, we want to make it clear to you that we're not closing the door on other more ambitious updates in the game in the future. We've still got big plans, but we want to be honest with you in saying that we need to spend more time with them before putting them out in the show. Bang, good statement right there. Full support. I mean, I don't, I don't play Pharaoh, but still. Uh, that's, that is, there's nothing wrong with that. Asking for more time before we put on show, people, people will be forgiving of that. That's fine. Just do a good job of it. Uh, whilst we have removed the Dynasty edition of the game, but what about Deluxe edition? Anyway, from our lineup and have internally changed our plans for what we go to do next, we'll still be releasing incremental updates to the game that help to bring fixes and changes to the core experience along the way. One plan we've always had since the early stages of development of Pharaoh is to expand the size of the campaign map as a free update, Mortal Empires, and to introduce even more factions and cultures to the game. So yeah, it does seem like this is hinting towards a combined map between Troy 
and Pharaoh. But here's here's the big thing: most people who own Troy do it. They own it on Epic Game Store, so they don't want you to know this just yet because they want you to buy Pharaoh on Steam, and then you've got your Troy game on Epic, and it won't freaking communicate. And so then you either need to buy Troy on Steam or Pharaoh on Epic. So you have to double dip. So if you're interested in this free map as a sorry, this free campaign map update, my advice to you is don't purchase Pharaoh or Troy until they actually make it clear what they're doing here, because you're going to have to purchase it all on the same for, uh, on the same storefront. Okay, and last thing I want to see you guys have to do is imagine, imagine having to pay uh, freaking $40 twice for this <laughs> because you wanted to play the combined map. That'll be bullshit. So being being transparent, huh? We'll we'll see when the time comes with this if if it's going to have to be on the same storefront. Well, I'm going to keep a close eye on this one. You know, why? What you have a good opportunity now to um, to be clear about this so people don't have to double dip. So we'll see about that one. Uh, we're very proud of our teammates and grateful for all the players who picked up Pharaoh. Uh, to those players, the team are forever reading all your comments and feedback with the goal of bringing you future fixes and changes that catch us up on the things that we've missed. CA Sophia is very good with this kind of stuff, with the, with the feedback. Very responsive to it. Way better than what we experienced with Warhammer 3. Um, I wasn't really that involved with Troy. I did get early access to it. And they were actually very responsive to the feedback that we had back then. Uh, but I just wasn't interested in making content for it. Uh, so CA Sophia is very good. Um, I just wish that they had better tools to work with. Uh, before we sign off from today's blog, we're going to talk about how we can include more of your voices in what we do. We want to expose more of what we do behind the scenes. You hear that here, folk? Creative Assembly want to expose themselves behind the scenes. Um, oh, man, a whole bunch of jokes just popped into my head there, which I think I'll save for another day. Our goal is to invest more in our player channels moving forward. Uh, introducing more voices from the studio who can speak to you directly about their work and how that relates to what you want from our titles. Most importantly, to keep listening to your feedback. Uh, this will all be a work in progress, so do bear with us, but this is our direction moving forward. So what I mentioned this is, uh, Criticism used to do this a fair bit during Warhammer 2, where they would have some people come on to either the Total War Live channel or um, the Total War official channel, actually do a live stream fairly regularly and actually just play the game. Uh, they don't do it so much these days. They do with uh, CA Sophia up and up until the end of the, I guess, the marketing of it. So that'll be interesting to see. Because uh, I imagine they've got whole new staff members uh, doing this as well. To see the Total War official team actually, uh, the Total War official YouTube actually um, start live streaming again. Uh, we again apologize for the missteps we've made. That's okay. Just don't do them again. <laughs> uh, the mistakes of uh, Total War are a shared responsibility by all the leaders of the franchise. Yep, totally is. And while it may not seem like it at times, we are listening. But, okay, so I want to make this one clear. It is very clear that they listen, but they have not acted on the feedback and on the criticism and on the outrage up until this point. They had to wait until everything went to absolute shit before they have acted on it. There is no point listening to anything if you don't if you're not willing to act on it uh we really hope that the extra love we're pouring into warhammer 3 dlc several recent updates and the changes for pharaoh uh show our heartfelt commitment to these games and to you yeah because you ne you need to get them to sell again because yeah you're not selling stuff um which, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we know we have a lot of work to do, and this one letter doesn't amount to any proof of the future. You're damn right. So let's see some proof. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely keen to see it. Uh, you'll need to see the changes before you believe it. You will hear from us again on the changes coming to Shadows of Change and what to expect from Pharaoh uh, when we return from the holidays. And you'll continue to hear from us on the Total War leadership team once we've settled back into the flow of the new year, and we'll keep bringing you more news on where we're at. Uh, where we make mistakes in this next part of our journey, we'll work hard to act faster, to address them, and to it, sorry to iterate whilst we learn from these moments and to always be taking steps in the right directions. Uh, we, I don't really have anything to comment on that. This is just like a wrapping of things up. Uh, we hope that you can find patience for us and as we find our footing again, and we hope that the coming months we can prove to you with actions along with words. I am 100% behind this. Um, like, obviously, throughout this, I have been super critical, calling them out and stuff. I'm going to keep doing that. But 
I definitely want to see everything get better. Uh, you know, I, I don't like this situation of Creative Assembly versus the community, um, where everyone's just sort of antagonistic towards them, inclu- especially me. So if we can get to the point where where I'm saying, yeah, look, I trust that the next DLC is going to be good, and I'm not really worried about it. I'd love to be able to say that, but oftentimes I'm just sitting here going, oh, man, the next thing is going to be a fucking nightmare, which is what happened with Shadows of Change. It's like, I even expressed it to the influencer management team. I was like, I'm not looking forward to this new DLC because i got to deal with a fucking shitstorm, <laughs> which is what we all had to deal with, uh, some more than others. Uh, we hope all the... Uh, Sorry, we hope you all enjoy a peaceful holiday. Thank you for being with us in 2023, for sharing with us in your love of Total War. We'll see you in 2024. Happy holidays, Roger, Total War leadership team, Rich Aldridge, Rob Bartholomew, still there apparently. And uh, Ian Roxburg, that's that's the main developer f- for um, main Warhammer 3. Uh, but do you know who isn't there? Um, Mike Simpson. Apparently Mike Simpson has... Uh, is no longer working at Creative Assembly. Now, Mike Simpson, in my opinion, was one of the, was the OG guy that was like responsible for the founding of Total War. He basically invented the Bible uh, of it, and he's personally responsible, as from what I've heard, for basically getting Shogun Two more time in the oven so that it would release really well. So the loss of Mike Simpson is really bad, if that is actually the case, because I don't see him there, because I believe he was the studio director. Uh, so wherever Mike Simpson is, I definitely want to salute him and say, you did the best that you could with the tools that you had, because he, he's responsible for a lot of good stuff that happened with Total War, and at least a lot of the stuff that happened bad under his watch, he took responsibility for it, which I can appreciate. We all make mistakes. Mike Simpson was someone who I had no interaction with, but in all of his statements, he never came across as somebody who just bullshitted and lied. So I just I never had a problem with the dude. So um, I think it's a loss for the company for him not to be there. Attila! No, I'm just kidding. Oh my God, why did I even say that? Uh, anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Hope you... Um, if you enjoyed it, let me know your comments below, uh, below in the in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this stuff. I think overall, it's a very good statement from Creative Assembly for the most part. I do not like emotional blackmail at all. Uh, <laughs> PTSD with that now. Uh, don't try to use the community's outrage uh, for things that you did against them. That's not cool. They have every right to be that way because you guys have a habit of not listening. And because you don't listen, people voice their concerns louder. So you brought it on yourselves. Don't don't make it feel bad for doing that. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.